Hello, hello, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XI. So, today I went ahead and pre farmed a little mercury and a smoldering arm so we can start off by fighting this iron giant or ironclad, well, you know, whatever. Uh, so that we can fight the last cataract. And since last time I realized that the idea I was having last time with Ranger Sub probably won't work because I will probably pull hate. Uh, e so, we're gonna opt for... I'm Dark Knight sub today. We're gonna opt for being all out against that final cad ray. Rely on our item level and our temporary items to let us kill it. I think we get our dagger ones with Dark Knight subs. We don't. Go figure. Yeah. You're damn right, you're intimidated by my presence. Our cana killer going to work. I feel like Chero Kiki takes forever and a day to cast a race on me. Also, sometimes I feel like having all, almost all of, or even, you know, all of or almost all of the red weaknesses is kind of annoying, because, like, if you have most of them, you're, you're, you're tempted to try all of them. And assuming you get red, then it's worth it. But if you don't, you know, you basically just slow down your kill speed by, you know, fucking however many minutes. Part of me just wants the Unga and the Bunga. I think all we got left is Club here. Well, the ones we can do with the Dark Knight sub, so. Probably gonna have to respawn this sucker. That's okay though, the video just started, you know? Well... Don't think that it's the thing, so I'm just gonna kill it. Or rather, I, I, I don't think we have the thing. Barrel 
Chariot, what are you doing over here? Let's not fight you and say we did. If I lose to the Cateray, I'm gonna have to refarm. You know, refarm the top set and all that. Yay, Terror, my favorite diva. We got the key item anyway. We can go die to the cadre. It'll be, it'll be groovy. Hmm. I never did look, look up what those iron plates are for. Let's see, what are you for, iron plate? Let's see, the piff harp and the ut. Oh, okay, this, they're for the um, the paladin shield, o chain, and the bard harp, dardabla, or whatever. Um, so, I don't really care about him. Yeah, now we gotta go west, pretty much. Just straight west, more or less, through the uh, dolls. And uh, we're gonna use our Imminent Sword, even though it's item level 117. Ronnie's level 19, or one, the level 90 content. And. A little reduction on item level's not going to hurt when the trade-off is being able to use resolution. And uh, we don't have full merits in resolution yet, but it is our most highly merited weapon skill. It's also one of the most powerful weapon skills in the game. And uh, I'm going to put away Nanamigo. I don't really care about anything Ronnie drops, although I wouldn't mind giving the opponent's ring. I'd much rather have Kultata. And... Uh, As a before sort of thing, we're gonna fight and kill this hybrid elemental. It's a dark darkness slash earth elemental. Abyssia actually is what introduced uh, Heroes of Abyssia, I believe, is what introduced these uh, hybrid elementals. There's dark and earth hybrids, uh, fire and light hybrid, wind and lightning, and water and ice. If I remember right, they stole most of them to use for sprite uh, models in uh, Final Fantasy XIV. So. They still exist. I could not get an erase from uh, freaking Cherokee to save my life. I really miss a Pururu right now. We'll fight something else just to make sure, or just to try to get buffs again or something. Give, give me those rolls, Kultata. Joaquin, could I have an erase, please? Thank you. I called him Joaquin again. That's actually Joachim or something, or Joachim. Uh, whatever. Okay, so... Uh, this... Boss means business. We're basically just gonna go ham right off the bat, um, and more or less hope to kill it uh, for great justice. Uh, I don't 
think a set X matters at all, but I'm gonna use it anyway. And we'll use the other temp items if we get in trouble. But here we go. Oh, actually, I guess I should also use my instant re-raise. Oh, and you know what? I want... Since I don't have, seem to have a Dusty Wing, I want an Icarus Wing to use. Do you sense an aura of boundless rage? There she is, Ronnie. Hey, baby. Now she absorbs physical damage when she's TPing and magical damage when she is uh, doing TP moves. So. Go! Oh. Yay! Last Gatorade killed. It's a shame we didn't get her uh, Atma, but uh, I don't care because <laughs> uh, she could have been a problem, but uh, even my Gimp Ass resolutions are more than enough to cook her goose and a few weapon skills, so. That's the power of item level. And we actually got some of her drops. We got the Hecate's earring, or Hecate, or Hecate's, or however the hell you say that. Which is pretty good. It's magic attack bonus, and it also lets your magic crit by giving you magical critical hit rate, which is something that they st steadily have been adding to the game ever since the Abyssia era. Uh, it's good for any nuking build and any elemental weapon skill build. I don't, I'm sure there's better options out there somewhere, um, but I don't know what they are. And then we got Uther's Grip, which isn't really that great. Um, I'll probably just throw Uther's Grip away. I uh, don't think it's really worthwhile. Maybe I should look it up first. Maybe it has a hidden effect. BG Wiki doesn't have anything about a hidden effect, so I assume there's nothing. But, uh, eh, meh. Pretty sure back in the day, people kind of liked that, and the mantra surrounding it was, um, something along the lines of, no double attack cast diminishing returns, or what have you. I am not one of those people. Mainly because I haven't progressed to a point where I have all the gear that lets me have insane amounts of double attack. I've actually heard that with job gifts, when you master warrior, get get uh, the 2100 job points, that uh, you can actually get enough gear to give warrior 100% double attack. Which sounds pretty ballin', I'm not gonna lie. That means when you're dual wielding, you always do four hits. <sighs> that's a higher, uh, that's a higher average attack round than a Kraken Club, so... I mean, without the possibility for the highs, I guess. Oh yeah. But if you remember last time, we, uh... What did we do? We talked to Yoakim right at the end there, and he told us, after many, many thank yous, because uh, he can't stop thanking us for saving a world he's no longer a part of. Um, 
But yeah, to go meet his Chiggy Boo back at uh, Hall of Gods. And so by the time we get there, um, it should be almost time to go in. It's it's not quite dusk yet. We got about five minutes until the end. So I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna mount up. I'm just gonna run like I am. Uh, the title that Ronnie gives is Ronnie the Crowner. So, yeah. And the thing we didn't get to see her do was her signature move. Each of the Cateray has a signature move. Uh, Erethams is just like really high dark damage AoE that I don't remember the name of. Kutherase was Banner at Charge. Yane's was like Besieger's Bane, but we didn't get to see that one either. Uh, Sepoy's... I don't remember what Sepoy's was. I don't even know if we saw Sepoy's. We saw Raja's, though. Raja's was Royal Decree. And uh, it strips you of your sub-job. So. But it's kind of funny when they designed them. It's just like... Everything was reasonable until Ronnie. With Ronnie, they got a little out of hand. They're like, okay, we're just going to make her absorb physical damage during TP moves, and we're going to make her absorb magical damage during casting, and she's going to basically always be doing one or the other. Oh, by the way, under 50%, she can just charm up to 18 yalms out. Uh... Oh, by the way, I think it's a darkness-based charm. It also gives you a little, uh, Cateray costume or whatever. It makes you look like a miniature sit boy. Um, but you really don't want it to happen. I was like, it wouldn't have killed us. It would have just despawned all of our trusts. And then, um... Like, we might have died because once we became uncharmed, she would have regained HP, or regenerated HP, and then also, um, I think after you reduce her to 50%, she, uh, she can still charm even if she's regenerated back up above 50%, so you'd have to deal with it again, possibly. And my initial idea was, oh, I'll sub Ranger and I'll let my trusts do all the work because they can't be charmed. If I just stand at maximum range with the bow, you know, I'll never get charmed, so it's no concern. But then I was just like, looked at her calculated HP on the old wiki, it's like 80,000, half of Rajas. I was like, wait a minute, 80,000? Tch, I could probably just kill her out right with a Mighty Strike, Zerg. So I did. You saw it. Alright, we're just gonna vibe to these Romave tunes for a minute. We gotta wait for 1804 before we can get the cutscene. I suppose I could turn names off. And, uh... I don't know. I like having my proper item level. I think these feet are actually really good, as far as uh, being welfare gear goes. I mean, they've got PDT, they've got accuracy, they've got attack, they've got every stat, uh, oh, you know, over plus 10. Um, they've got magic defense bonus, they got magic evasion, they got haste. Most of the welfare gear, like the Sparks gear that's I-117 and stuff, it, it really... Like, it has the stat vomit, as you call it, you know, a bunch of stats, most of them over plus 10. But the attack and accuracy on Sparks I-117 gear is like 5 to 8 or something like that, and usually it's only one of them. Yeah, we could definitely use better 
better pants and head. Because our pants and head don't seem to have any any accuracy or attack. They're still great, I mean, for, for our purposes. It's just, uh, I'm sure there's better out there. We definitely need some, need to start looking into some capes and necklaces and earrings and rings. Uh, I'd like to get an eyelid level bow as well. been waiting for you, matey. Thank you once again for coming. I apologize that a location more convenient cannot be arranged. My time is limited, as you are already aware, so pray excuse me if I seem curt. Tell me, Calm Wind, are you aware of the current state of Abyssia? It's, uh, bad? Yarg! Calm Wind and I, we talked well. I blathered more like about that subject some when we first met. Or for, when we first we met. It'd be something to do with the objects across dimensions existing at the same time, I. Eh? You are not wrong, Google Mesh. Pray allow me to elaborate. Even before the Great Cataclysm befell, numerous realities had existed side by side, near but never encroaching. This tenuous coexistence, however, now threatens to come to an end. Separate dimensions are being merged into one, driven by the will of Promathia. And it is that self-same will that births the multitudinous new species that breathe only to eradicate mankind. Dramathia desires the reversion of the mortal realm into paradise. However, this transformation cannot take place so long as mortals exist. This is the truth that which the survivors have come to fear as the Abyssian hordes. Or the truth behind that which the survivors have come to fear as the Abyssian hordes. K Crikey! Talk about getting your ship sunk! These creatures are, for all intents and purposes, emissaries of God. For mortals be to be taken by them, some might be fain to call it salvation. Pesha! <laughs> that ain't no salvation I be signing up for. Not this lifetime, and sure as heck not the next. Neither! Might be mankind sprung from the loins of this man-god, but each of us got a mind of our own. And me mind says this be nothing I want no part of. Eloquently said, Gigglemesh, and truer than you might know. For even as the Twilight God harbors death and emptiness, so too does the desire for life survive within him. There is no greater proof of this than that mankind, his children, choose to fight for survival. And so it is our destiny to make a stand, even should it mean defying the will of a god. And to fight you did, Calmwind, the you and yours of Abyssia. Our destination is the highest plane of existence, the celestial capital of Altaiu. There, there is where the final battle between mankind and Promethea was waged. Yar. If we already know where to go, then it ought to be smooth sailing from here on out. If all dimensions be merging into one, then this altitude place... <laughs> altitude? I, it does actually kind of sound like that. I'm not going to think of it. Ought to be somewhere of Anabysia, eh? Even should we determine its location, gaining access will not be a f simple affair, I fear. Due to the cataclysm, the precious few gateways that once existed are no more. No more, you say? They up and disappeared someplace? The portal at the Sea of Shumeo, for one, was lost when the Great Tremor shook the land. Even if it yet exists, perhaps on the sea floor, there is not to suggest that it can still be reached. Yar, The currents and storms in those there parts have been feared for their treacherousness, even since before the gall dung splattered the sails. And this pirate sooner skipper his ship from atop the deck, not among the fishes and seaweeds. Just so. 
Three other gateways were situated, one each in Lathane Plateau, Constance Chat, and Torangi. Inside them craggy white things, eh? The one that stood in the plateau ain't no there no more, I saw for myself. Why, it's as if it weren't ever there to begin with. The crags, all of them and Mia, all three were gateways to the true crystal linked to it via the crystal line. That they have now disappeared could only mean one thing. The five fragments of the true crystal, too, are beginning to merge into one. Yarg, I ain't sure I follow. So that fandangle crystal be trying to glue itself together, but what of it? That the fragments are merging in past is past certain. The only question that remains, then, is where the joining will take place. I believe that the answer we seek may be found on Quiffum, the island which serves as the point of convergence for the crystal line. I regret to say, however, that the undersea cave linking Juno to the island, too, has been inaccessible since the collapse of Heaven's Bridge. Furthermore... What? Be there no end to this woman? Yar! But who be this pirate to talk? Here, well, carry on, then. The likelihood is high that the celestial capital of Alteu has not, in fact, descended to Abyssia. Er, you've gone and lost me again, lass. Forgive me, but the workings of Apocalypse are seldom simple. I shall endeavor to explain things more plainly. The Keeper of the Apocalypse should have spelled the end of mankind, yet this has not come to pass. And I credit your hypothesis to be the reason, Gilgamesh, that the champions of Abyssia have done something to prevent the complete merging of dimensions. There exists a place that has undergone drastic change, a place that is of Abyssia, yet not part of it. And though not small by any measure, it has largely escaped our notice. Oh, Abyssia, but not part of it. Large, but escapes notice. Blimey, little missy, could you dispense with the riddles and spit it out already? His lips didn't move at all. As it please you, Gilgamesh, the place I speak of is none other than the moon. Well, shave me beard and call me senile. <laughs> Wrote this. <laughs> the moon appears to have greatly increased in size. It is obvious if only one knows to look. Whether it has grown larger in actuality or has simply been drawn nearer to Abyssia cannot be readily determined. All things considered, however, I am compelled to believe it is there that Altaio has descended, ascended. Assuming what you say be truth, how the bloody heck do we get to the moon? Fire ourselves out of O cannons? The cavernous mamas. You reckon the same ones we've been using all this while? Being portals that connect our world Abyssia to Calm One Zone, it's not beyond imagining that the self same moss can take us to Altaio. Our agents report frozen moss scattered across the land, but there seems to be no way of rousing them. Those are of no concern to us, for I am convinced the gateway we seek will not be so apparent, but rather hidden beyond mortal reach by a force that loves us not. Loves us not? What gives you that impression, if I might ask? To explain would require us to revisit the subject of life forms. Pray, bear with me. Of the heretofore unseen creatures that rose to prominence in the Cataclysm's wake, none is shrouded in more mystery and held in greater trepidation than the Cataray. Even more striking, however, is the close resemblance they bear to mankind, where others of the Abyssinian Horde appear to be not more than accidents of nature. The similarity, I do not believe, is innocent coincidence. Once again, I find myself resorting to speculation, but I suspect the Cataray's involvement in the greater scheme of things. Crikey, little miss! Most of us can put two and two together, but the figures you play with be in the tens of thousands! But seeing as we don't got nothing else to go on, I reckon this line of possibility be as feasible as any. So the Cataray, eh? This recalls to mind reports of folk feeling their emotions being ruled by some unknown force when confronting them. If you ask me, there'd be something hidden within the foul shadows they cast. Ain't that right, Calmwind? Calmwind, I believe you already know what must be done. You must go forth and defeat the creatures. Yes, every last one. Kill every last one of them! Okay, Dimitri. The likelihood that the Cataray block our path to salvation can be ill-ignored. Even if eliminating them proves fruitless to our greater cause, it would nonetheless be ki a kindness to the survivors. I am not unmindful of the immeasurable good you have already done for our cause, yet we must ask for your aid once again. Maybe I already did it. That kind is forever in your debt, Calmwind. Ha-ha! Now that be the Calmwind I know. Er, not that we've been acquainted long, to be sure. Six subspecies of the Cataray have been confirmed to exist. Besides the fact that they displayed territorial behavior, however, we have managed to learn little else. We know full well we send you into perilous domain. Please take all care. 
Yar, to me Hardy's and I be counting on you, matey. In the meantime, I be off to dig us up more of the moss, just in case we miss something. Boop, boop. A boop, scoop, buggy. So now that we've done that, I'm actually not sure what we gotta do next. I don't know if we just zone back into Romave, or if we, or, uh, Hall of Gods, or if we go talk to Yo Yoakim again. Um, I'm going to try just zoning back into Hall of Gods first, and it probably won't do anything. But, uh, oh, okay, well, uh, I guess we'll go cut the Yellow Kim then. Because we've killed every Cateray, and I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, we didn't have to re-kill them back in the day, so... Although, we did, because we all, back in the day, we wanted all the drops from the Cataray. Like, Kutheray drops a boomerang, that's super desirable for Thief back in the day. Ronnie's dropped the opponent's ring, which everybody wanted. Everybody and their mom. Uh, I think Raja has something that mages wanted. A set of pants, I think. I don't know. Um... Erethem had a body that was desirable for the heavy, heavy quote-unquote damage dealers back in um, the 80 and 85 cap, for some of them. And then, uh, let's see, Yane had that red mage cap and the... I want to say one other thing. And Sepoy had the Ravager's Orb for Warrior Mains. Which was like, oh, every warrior wants the Ravager's Orb. And the collect collecting enthusiasts back in the day, they, they wanted all the Atmas and all the Abyssites just to have them. You might have noticed, but I, I don't really care too much about collecting things. I'm not I'm not a in spite of my inventory, I'm not a hoarder. And uh A lot of people who play this game are hoarders. And I can only imagine just how bad their inventories are. Yay, you know who needs to speak with you again. Are you gonna thank me? And give me a hand job. All the juicy details about the cataray, huh? Just one more thing. I finally found out about everything. It was so fantastical. Every word so far beyond the realm of logic. I was struck dumb. So dumb, in fact, that my accent changed again. But then again, how else could you explain the cause for the devastation once befallen Abyssia? I'm told you've got a mind to go against the divinity, Conwind. I can't help but scratch my head at why you do so much for a world that isn't even your own. It's been bothering me, Conwind. Won't you tell me what drives you, mate? Just because! Let's ignore the fact that Mildarion or Eshentarl from Abyssia said that all of the parallel Vandiel multiverse was going to be affected by this. Something you've been meaning to give me. An abyssite of discernment. It's a memento of me home. Something I've been able to let go haven't been able to let go of till now. I'm entrusting it to you, mate. It's the token of your faith in me. Or faith might me faith in ye. <sighs> Thank God. Okay. So that is the Abyssite that will finally let us actually see which weakness. Is happening. Or well like. It gives us hints. It gives us hints. We have our hint. Key item now. That's a beautiful thing. Okay. 
Alley oop. And now we just teleport back out to Rome, walk back in there. Good that cutscene. And then I think we should be able to go fight the final boss to Abyssia. And then technically we will be done with Abyssia because we'll be done with its storyline. Of course, we haven't done any of the quests, side quests throughout any of the areas. I haven't farmed an Empyrean weapon at all. Uh, we probably don't even have like half the Atmas. Uh, there's a bunch of Abyssites we could get. Um, the list goes on. Wait, what am I doing? Dude, I, I teleported to the Rulu Gardens to use the books, and then I went in my Mog House because I'm retarded. Oh, man. Delete to lower, please. Swing. Hey there, matey. We've been waiting for you. Come in and glad me to see you safely returned. Shortly after the last cataray was dispatched, a new source of the dimensional disturbance manifested in your, your world. As suspected, the twisted creatures are linked to the Twilight God, and their heads are indeed... And theirs had indeed been the presence concealing the gateway to our destination. The disturbance was detected on Quiffam Island by the southern edge of the wall outside Delkfoot's tower. Yarr, it seems you're in six feet right on the coin, little missy. Granted, much of it may have been seemed like guesswork, but there actually is a straightforward explanation for all this. When Altheo ascended to the highest plane, part of it was left behind in the mortal realm. That part was none other than Quiffam Island, the point of convergence for the Crystal Line. Whoa, Missy, I don't recall a request in a lecture. Sea of Shumeo, it would interest you to know, as the terrestrial location of the celestial capital, my words would be made clearer if you examined the pre-cataclysm map of the area. Shiver me timbers, the area around Quiffum. It'd be circular, all right, but the scale of it be, be out of this world. Yes, and having noted that peculiarity, I made my conjecture that if another cavernous ma were to exist, there could be no other place for it. This, Google Mesh, was precisely why I sent you to investigate Quiffum's surrounds, ensuring that differences in existential phase were accounted for. Well, I'll be danged. You sure know a lot, little missy. Especially for one who looks young enough to call me grandpappy. I've been wondering for some time now, but hadn't the chance to voice me thoughts. Who the heck are you, exactly? Very well. In light of our dire circumstance, I will not keep this from you. I am a survivor of a long-lost civilization called the Zillard. It has been my charge to watch over Abyssia from the dark shadows of time. Blimey, you'd be a veritable treasure trove of surprises. Well, then this means a couple of things. First, that all your claims be based on experience. And second, that ye be me senior by no small margin. I suppose it won't cut it no more for me to call you little missy. <laughs> the goddess forbid. I am not ungiven to being called such. But let us return to the subject at hand. That of the dimensional disturbance. Wait, did she just basically say she likes being called little missy? Although the cataray are eliminated and obstruct our passage no more, the newly formed gateway remains unfit to be traversed by one of Abyssia. 
Nah, I mean, Jolly Little Scally mission found us no moss, per se, at Quiff of My Fear. There'd be a portal of sorts, true, but she don't seem to be fully manifested. To venture a guess, I'd say this incomplete alignment be the reason why me folk could get stripped of half our strength in the crossing. Much like a sailor gets relieved of cloth and coin when he visits a dodgy, er, establishment. Forgive me yet another hypothesis, Calmwind, but your subjugation of the Cataray may well be proof that you can enter Altaio without de detriment. Whether or not this theory holds water, there is but one way to find out. Pray make all haste for Quiffam Island, and thence to the Celestial Capital, where the Keeper of the Apocalypse abides. Okay! There be no guessing the horrors, but wait. But the fact is, they be the best endowed to deal with him. Yarrrg! Yes, the of our entire world rest upon calm wind and his comrades. It be a right heavy burden. I pray they won't get crushed by it. I don't think we'll get crushed by it, Gilgamesh. We've got trusts. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Also, my friend Crusant said that he's playing again, and he's like, I'll help you get a I-119 greatsword, and I was like, uh, okay, but I'm like at work all week, and uh, my playtime is limited. Apparently there's some way to get some really good gear from uh, Unity Notorious Monsters, and then further augment it by doing an event called Odyssey. And apparently you can augment it after Odyssey just by going through the Odyssey zones. You don't even actually have to kill anything. You just have to make it to the end alive. So that sounds kind of neat. Let's see. Go from Island, please. Up, up, and away! Move tablets! Okay, so we might have passed it earlier in the Let's Play, but the, uh, yeah, the Transcendental Radiance. This is the place they elected to put the end of Abyssia right here, oh, right now. Your Traverser Stone resonates with the eerie glow before you. You suspect that Altaio lies on the other side of the dimensional distortion. What? We need 10,000 Kuor just to go in? Holy fuck, man. <sighs> okay, uh, we'll go back to Bastok and see if we can't get any um, Kuror with, like, copper vouchers or something. I don't know. No one's rogered up on my other video. I, assuming, I assume they uh, haven't gotten far enough in it to hear me ask the question or say, you know, Tell me how to get Kuror, yas. Although I'm pretty sure the answer is start Void Watch, but I don't want to start like a even if it's a minor storyline, I don't want to start a new storyline while doing this storyline. So, and if we don't have enough copper vouchers to give ourselves 10,000 crew or, or more than 10,000 crew, or we'll just I don't know, we'll just go run around Abyssia real quick and like kill NMs specifically for crew war or something. I don't know, like. Man, that's the like this is literally a problem I never thought I'd have. Because on my main character, you know, I did Abyssia for years and he's like without even trying, like yeah, he probably still has like half a million crew war. Like crew war was so plentiful from leveling and, and just doing Abyssian content for like the uh, the, the Abyssia area went, went from, like, 2010 until 2013, almost, so, like, it was, it was, like, part of the game's life cycle for, like, two and a half years. Ooh, could you give me... Cruor, please? I would like... Three. Okay, I would like one. 
because we're gonna need we're gonna need more than ten thousand because once we're actually inside of the final area, there's gonna be somehow there's gonna be a Kuor prospector and all the other Abyssia shenanigans. So. Womp womp. My immersion. Swing. would change your sub job but I don't really care to I don't think we need to change our sub job so I could be wrong we'll find out swing obtained a key item crimson traversa stone Abyssia Imperial Paradox. Well, 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 we've intersected Chains of Promethea for real lease, but in Abyssia. Calm wind, could it truly be you? But how is it that you're still here? P Prish? Huh? What the hell kind of reaction is that? Have you got a fever or something? Then again, with all you've been through, small wonder if you're not feeling yourself. No, wait, something isn't quite right here. Who are you? So all hell broke loose on Abyssia, and you're a calm wind, only you've come from another dimension. That's not the craziest thing I've ever heard, but sure as hell comes close. There's something I need to say. The wretched state of the world, it's, it's all our fault. I bet you've already figured it out. We went up against Promathia, Calm Wind. We took on the Twilight God, but we couldn't finish the job. We got our butts handed to us, in fact. All that drop kicking to no avail. You and your comrades were all swallowed up, and there was nothing I could do but stand by and watch in stunned horror. Being what I am, I was the sole survivor of the carnage. But truth be told, I would have sooner joined you all on the far side. I don't know if I could muster up the courage to face Cardinal Mildarian again. Yeah. Hey, hey, are you planning to do what I think you're planning to do? Yep. Why, you're every elm the gutsy adventurer of the calm wind I knew was. Always setting the bar so high, you make me look so bad, you know? At any rate, it's good to know that Calm Wind will always be Calm Winds, no matter what dimension he hails from. I do notice one difference, though, that oodles and boodles the power you emanate. It seems to be something inherent to folk of your world. I hate to admit it, but it's obvious I'll just end up cramping your style if I tag along. Therefore, I'm going to set this one out. My world, Abyssia, it's all in your hands now, Calm Wind. Calm Wind flashes his pearly whites at Prish. <laughs> How many times have I seen that doltish grin of yours? It sure brings back memories. Now, well, be, be dead serious for a moment, Calm Wind. You're bursting at the scenes of the power that the people of Abyssia can only dream of. This is true. However, the enemy that awaits beyond isn't the run of the mill man god you might be expecting. In absorbing our friend Celtus into his being, the Twilight God has evolved and taken on a fearsome new form. Terror, terror and dread made flesh. 
He looks more like a worm now, but one that's bigger, badder, and uglier than anything you've ever seen. But hey, don't let these little details unnerve you. When you square off against this souped-up Promethea, the foremost thing to keep in mind is to be yourself. That's right, Conwyn. Be your bloodthirsty, ruthless self. Ready yourself as best you can, because if, if even the extra-dimensional version of you can't come out on top, then the goddess forbid Abyssia truly is screwed. <laughs> I like her. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So they're quasi-lumens. How about that? Okay. Uh, could you infuse me with Voracious Violet? Uh-huh. And then infuse me with the... Uh, I guess just... Um, what does Vicissitude do again? Mm, major region and a little bit of magic defense bonus. Or we could grab Mounted Champion and get... Uh, yeah, I'll go with Mounted Champion. Enhancement effects, please. Schmanko. Okay. And so basically, I'm pretty sure our buffs wear. Um, but we're going to want to start off trying to get red weakness on this boss that we're about to fight. Okay. Alright. So, here we go. We're going to go fight Prometheus altered Abyssian form. Kind of like Bahamut. Like... Take on it. Which battlefield will you enter? The Worm God. Oh, look. Same cutscene we just saw, but now there's a timer in the upper left hand corner. use trust for this and uh, we'll want to go with trust that don't really do damage because he has absorption properties while his wings are spread wide uh, same thing same properties as Ronnie uh, but to a much greater extent I'm gonna try a cool PP. Okay. And because of item level, we probably won't have that much problems killing it. So you'll notice his HP bar is also invisible. You wanna to stand to his side like with all worms, because he has breath attacks. Fiend appears vulnerable to wind elemental weapon spirit, so we cannot trigger red. Well, we can try to trigger blue, I guess. I'm gonna let, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep hitting him and heal him some. Vulnerable to archery weapon skills. Well, we don't have ranger subs, so we can't get blue either. So, at this point, we just kill him then. There's Cosmic Breath. Now, about three or so minutes in, he's going to 
gonna eventually close his wings. And when he closes his wings, uh, like, I think he'll fly under. Oh, he absorbs while casting magic, too. Huh, how about that? Proto Star. That could hurt. Possibly. I should probably stop healing him. Oh, he reset our uh, abilities. I guess it's a good thing that we. Uh, Maybe I should put away Kukata. Just engage for a second. Put away Kukata. Because he is just healing the crap out of Shimmer. Oh, I think he just closed his wings finally. Once he closes his wings, he's, he becomes your bitch. Although, being doomed is uh, the opposite of what is good, so watch out for that. Oh, well, we killed him. Sweet. And we got his belt. The Twilight Belt. How about that? <laughs> Our trusts are dying from the doom. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Well, that belt we got is uh, it's level 90 belt. It's got 2% double attack and 7% haste. Uh, so it is actually um, slightly better than Ninurta's Sash. Um, yeah. Of course, it is level 90. But it's also only specifically for, for the jobs listed on it. So it's the um, Leather Daddies, is, is what I'm going to call them. The Leather Daddy Damage Dealers. And, uh, yeah. It's still really good. I'm, I'm going to use it. I'm going to make great use of it. But wait, wait, we actually do want a drop from the Shinryu fight. Um... We want to get a Torque, the Twilight Torque. It's uh, the same thing as Defending Ring, but for the next piece. And uh, instead of 10%, it's only 5%, but it's all damage taken. So that's a very great piece. Of course, since we won, we've got some cutscenes to watch. And uh, I guess if I want to do Shinryu over and over, I'm going to have to... Uh, I have to uh, get more crew war, so. You did it, Calvin. I always knew you could do it, but still, I was on pins and needles the whole time. I already, I'd already lost you once before, after all. It's just as I feared, though. Defeating a god won't turn back time, won't undo all the damage in the blink of an eye. Those who were taken won't be coming back, while those who remain will have to rebuild the world the old fashioned way. You see the ring of red in the sky, Calm Wind? That's there's the mother crystal, shattered all to pieces once again. Did you notice? Promethea is gone, but neither can I hear the voice of the goddess. I'm sure she's grieving in silence even as we speak. There's no cause for concern, though. As long as mankind lives on, so too will the gods give, that gave birth to us. Huh. So in this, in Abyssia, Alteo crashed on the moon. How about that? 
When her champions fell to Promethea, Abyssia was forced onto a new path, one with eventualities far departed from before. Things may never be the same again, but I still mean to put to good use of the long life I've been given. I'm going to stay here and keep watch over the world, see where it's all headed. You've had to go a long way to find a better view than here, don't you think, Calm Wind? Or you'd have to go a long way to find a better view than here, don't you think, Calm Wind? Oh, what's with the sidelong glance? Cut it out already. Spells and curses have no effect on me, let alone words and stares. If this is the moon we're standing on, then that thing a hojillion moms away must be Abyssia. It's as round as the moon, and even more beautiful, I reckon. This place, though, holds special meaning for me. After all, it's where I fought my last battle beside my friends. If I left, I'd be making a lot of people sad. I can't be doing that, now can I? That's why I have to stay. Rough days are still ahead for Abyssia, and it pains me that I won't be around to help out. But with you on the job, I know I've got nothing to worry about. When you get back, I want you to deliver a message to the Cardinal. Tell her that I'm alive, and I'm in strapping shape as always. Tell her also that I'm sorry. Folk can call me improper to send a... Godslayer as my errand boy, but as you can see, there's no one else around I can ask to do this favor. We may be of different worlds, but ours is a friendship of a dimension transcending. Go well, Kalmwind, and thank you. I hope it won't be long before we meet again. Hmm. So I guess the implication is that we were losing the battle with Promathia in this dimension, so we smashed the Mother Crystal? Huh. Also, Shinryu has an Atma he can drop, and we didn't get that either, because we we didn't trigger red and we didn't luck out. It's like a 10% drop rate with, with uh, without weakness trigger, but... There's also an armor set and a robe. And the robe actually gives um, access to a unique spell called Impact, which has been really popular the last few years from what I've read on the forums. It causes a massive stat down in every stat on the monster you cast it on. Although it costs like 666 MP or something. So it's a... Uh... But it's like the... It's basically like one of the best debuffs in the game. It's like so good that some people say... You should get this robe from Shinryu for your mages, uh, just for that spell, and use it against anything you can uh, when the situation allows you to. Let's see. Now in the future, uh, because it costs 10,000 crew ore to get in there, I guess, um, we'll only want to get that Crimson Traverser Stone, because the Crimson Traverser Stone lets us go in and out of there as many times as we want for free, once if we have it, but the, it gets consumed, I believe, every time we fight Shinryu, so, yeah, the Crimson Traverser Stone disappears, so if we'd lost the Shinryu, we would, we would have, wouldn't be able to try until I got more crew war, but, uh, yeah, whatever. So I think we might have to wait till nighttime to talk to uh Chicky Boo? I'm not one hundred percent sure. Um I would imagine so. Uh, we, we've got to actually, we've got to talk to Yoakim first. Go figure. But yeah, um, at least right now with the jobs that we've got access to, our best, t our best time to fight Shinryu to get the drops we want is like after 1400, but before 2300 or something like that, because that's the slashing window for. Um, for blue weakness and blue weakness is what causes Shinryu to drop uh, his armor 
like the robe and the bodies and he also drops a scythe and a dagger uh, both of which are kind of garbage nowadays because um, they don't have item level but there's a high tier battlefield version of this fight that drops item level versions of all the stuff you can get from this fight so um, we we had to we had to have done this fight to, in order to do that high tier battlefield. But the thing about high tier battlefields is that uh, one, they're they can be pretty hard because they're like actual like the that's the intent is these old fights that. You know, we, we, we kind of meatheaded everything in Abyssia, right? Like, we're not even skill-capped, you know, we're not even... Re we really don't even have level 99 gear sets at this point, because, you know, we just haven't put in the work or the time. Um, but the, the entire point of high-tier battlefields is, is basically item-level versions of the old fights, you know, so that you can actually see what those bosses were supposed to be like. Although, like I said already before in the last video, they added some things to certain fights to make them more challenging than they would otherwise be. Like you can't skill ch like there's one for Alexander, and you and you can't attack him from behind or the side, so there's no strategic placement for your party, and you can't skill chain on him at all, um, because if you do, he retaliates with a very deadly TP move every time you perform the skill chain, so. Is that right? So it'll be a while yet before lives return to normal. To be sure, be naive to believe all the damage what Abyssia sustained could be undone overnight. Deep down, though, I allowed myself to hope. I'd be lying through my teeth if I said I weren't disappointed. Regardless, I take great joy in knowing that mankind is saved. And that makes me, mates and I, are coming and being stranded here wasn't in vain. I want to thank you again, Kalman, both ye and yours, from the bottom of me art. A more courageous, valiant crew I'd never known. By the by, I've got another message here for you from the usual suspects. They want to see you as soon as you get back, mate. Said they'll be waiting at the same time, same place. You know the deal, I. How could I forget? It's been drilled into my head by this point. Oh my god, are you going to thank me for that, like, five billionth time? What will you do now that Abyssia is saved from her fate of certain destruction? Go fulfill a promise. Have the Traverser Stones ready, bitch. I like Yoakim. He's very one-note and kind of annoying, but I like him. Traverser Stone, please. Oh yeah, we got a title for killing Shinryu. It's Worm God to Fire. Oh yeah. Oh 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 yeah. Oh oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Of course, we're gonna need Crew War to get the last cutscenes with Prish. I guess let's see if we can actually do Void Watch. Not sure. City area Void Watch officer. Okay. Um. Uh, we have to go to cities. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll go to Bastok S then. Or, or, well, Bastok. 
I talked to the Void Watch officer there. Because of item level, all the early Void Watch will be super duper easy. Um, I don't know how much crew ore we get for it, but like I've heard that that's the way to go to get crew ore. So. And Void Watch is basically what the game uh, filled itself out with between Abyssia and Seekers of Adeline coming out. It was more or less, you know, just a bunch of new notorious monsters and battles and things. And uh, it's actually very fun to come out of. Like, you farmed all this gear and these super weapons out of Abyssia. Now you're going to fight, you know, these real McCoys uh, with less buffs. You know, out in the real world and see how powerful you really are. And for a while, Void Watch was full Alliance content again because the monsters were so powerful that, um... Uh, D11. Okay, what the heck is D11? Oh. Oh. Huh. Um, yeah, the monsters were so powerful that you, you had to team up to beat them. Even with Empyreans and Relics and Mythics and things. Although as the years went by and the level caps kept going up, uh, it required less and less people. And eventually... Um, eventually, it, it got to where you could do it with a party or less. Uh, participate in Void Watch. Okay. Uh... Void stones, huh? Uh, the next shipment is expected to arrive in 1199 minutes Earth time? What? Oh wow, I don't think this is going to be an option for us. Paintbrush, paintbrush, paintbrush. Three stones per person. Twenty hours earth time is required to produce a stone and imbue it with the necessary magics. Oh man. I think we're gonna wanna finish Rhapsodies of Vanadiel at this point, cause like I don't think <laughs> I don't think uh Waiting 20 hours for Void Stones is gonna cut it. At that rate, I might as well just go to Abyssia and get Crew War. But such is the life of somebody playing through very steadily and slowly and not efficiently at all, so. Oh, these wounds are self inflicted, all that. Yeah, those void stones will start building up now. Um, I guess we should <laughs> I should have talked to the, the void watch person a lot sooner. I forgot about that, and uh, if I hadn't, we'd probably have plenty of void stones to be getting crew or with. No, nope, that's my fault. I don't remember where. Oh, there it is. Sweet. Okay, so void. All void watch takes place 
It's all very simple, okay? This is the first first thing they added into the game where um, you use like an otherworldly rift basically to um, to fight a monster. That, that, that's all it is basically. You use a key item, the void stone, and uh yeah initiate the void watch and there's some more details to it but oh shallow seymour oh yeah, yeah. These are a lot of fun for people back in the day um, because you know getting to cut loose but be slightly weaker than you were inside of this year, uh, it you know, really let people have fun and go all out and stuff. Of course, it also meant actually having to take things seriously and do strategy again, which some people didn't like. But not that much strategy, especially for these early ones. Swing! Oh snap! Crystal petrifax. I don't even remember what those are for. Guess I can look it up. But yeah, you get these alignment values. I think there's a campaign going on for this right now. Oh shit! We got eleven thousand core for that. Obtains vivid periapt of exp exploration, huh? Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah. Void Watch is uh, like even at one stone a day, Void Watch would be one Shinryu a day. So that's kind of nice. I spoke too soon. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think if we get further in Rhapsody's of Vanadiel, we'll be able to get Void Stones faster. I think. I'm, I'm not sure. It'd be nice if we could, like, somehow trade Abyssia Stones for Void Stones, but... Ah, well. I suppose while I'm zoning, I could look into Void Watch. I've got the page open. Let's see... Oh yeah, they added in... Uh, items you can trade to the rift before you start the battle to weaken the boss. And that's really, really, really what allowed low manning of Void Watch to start happening. Let's see. Just want. Void Dust. The Void Wand Officer will provide the player Void Stones on our quest. Void Stones required for each participating player in the battle who wishes to uh, receive treasure or key items at the end. Other people can join the battles. Um, For base XP, base core, and without possessing void stones, but will not be eligible for treasure key items or alignment enhanced DXP or core rewards. Huh. Doodle -doo. Void stones are generated over time, one per 20 hours or as low as 12 hours with two parry apps of exploration and an unlimited amount can be accumulated on the void watch officer once the player initially speaks to one so as soon as we got to level 75 we could have spoken to an officer and they could have started building these for us and it, it, this is a case if i shot myself in the foot by not caring about it for too long wow i feel dumb but Oh well. Let's 
C'est la vie. Void stones can also be obtained by trading void dust, which can be obtained from void watch purveyors or grounds of valor caskets. Huh. As of April 5th, 2016, players can now use void stones directly from their stock instead of refilling into their inventory. You must change the setting in order to take advantage of it. Huh. Well, that's interesting. So, I don't see anything mentioned about Rhapsodies making Void Stones come in faster. But we got a periapt of something, right? Let's see. What's that music? We've been waiting for you, matey. That you stand before us now can only mean one thing. Sweet victory. Yar. His old pirates met many a mourn folk in his day, but none of them can hold a candle to ye, matey. Welcome back, Conflict. While it was still fresh in your mind, I would have you recount to us all that transpired. I beat a dragon up. It was easy. I see. I am elated to learn that Prish is alive and well. The pain and suffering she has had to endure are beyond even my imagining. It is I, not she, who needs to apologize for being powerless to do more. We Abyssians had stood on the precipice of destruction, every last person all but lost to hope. But a miracle appeared, instilling us with courage and resolve, ultimately saving us from a fate of certain destruction. That miracle, Comlands, is you. Our boundless gratitude is forever yours. Although the Keeper of the Apocalypse is no more, the scars of tragedy remain graven within the hearts of mortals. Yet time heals all wounds, no matter how deep they might run. And then people will rise again in united purpose and restore Abyssia to her former glory. Even now, the seeds of new lives, of a new and resilient generation, are sprouting, taking root. Taking root, you say, like a tree? Yes, Gilgamesh, like a tree. Calm wind, do the soldering old pirate a favor by keeping an eye on on the Mia yo your world, will ya? Because if he be anything like me, he'll be needing close supervision. Yar. As you already know, Abyssia will be long in the recovering, so we'd appreciate you parking it in from time to time, lending a helping hand here and there. You've given us much, Calm wind, including the precious gifts of life, a chance of living. I only wish there'd be some way for me to be and the Arties to repay you. Before I go wandering off, I feel obliged to thank you again for putting up with me nihilist prattling. You've been a most attentive pair of ears. Fare you well, matey, and may the wind always fill your sails. Calm wind. I know not the future that awaits you, the branches of eventualities that lie along the way. Yet in a world of infinite possibilities, it cannot be ruled out that the cataclysm that befell Abyssia may one day descend upon Vendiel. You must stay strong and ever ready, Calm Wind, for the time may come when your uncommon courage and valor will be needed once more. Before I take my leave, I have one last favor to ask of you. It concerns Prish. For all her carefree demeanor, she has known naught but hardship and suffering her entire life. It would mean much to both Prish and me if you could pay her a visit on occasion whenever time permits. As your counterpart in Abyssia stood by her, easing the pain that racks her gentle heart, so too would I ask the same of you. Thank you, Calm Wind, and farewell. May the stars shine their countenance upon you always. But no hot blonde for you, Calm Wind. Go smooch your lolly elf. Although, actually, Prish doesn't really seem like much of a lolly for me. to me. She's, like, stuck in a upper teenage body of an elven that's still taller than most humes, so. I mean, the intent is a forever young, you know, teenage elf, but 
Like, clearly she's like 40 or 50 or something and immortal. This kind of breaks the mold, you know? Like, usually if a lolly is like forever young and super, but actually super old, you know, the, the trope or the, uh, or the, uh, meme or whatever is, you know, 1,000 year old but looks like an 8 year old or something. But Prish is like in the body of a, I don't know, 17 year old and, you know, but is actually like 50. <laughs> so like, that actually, that's like something that actually happens to real women in, in real life too. It's like some, some women never get taller than like 5 feet, you know, and, uh, don't actually like start looking older until their 60s. Okay. Thank you, Sallow Seymour, or whatever your name was. Oh, neat. So that. The, the the Perry app that we got from Sallow Seymour actually did um, actually did let us get void stones faster and we'll get them every 16 hours now but we won't get another one until almost the end of the void watch line which is a little bit sad but oh well that's what I get for shooting myself in the foot Hey, if it isn't the other calm wind, did you forget something where you left when you left? Or perhaps there I hope you came all this way to see little old me. Uh, poor Prish, never a moment to herself, but such is the price of popularity. Hey, the joke wasn't that bad, was it? Hmm, perhaps the time in solitude has dulled my edge. But never mind that. It's truly good to see you again, calm wind. And it appears you've already delivered my message to the Cardinal. Ah, uh, sorry, it's the Whisper of the Soul thing that told me. It's against the rules, I know, but you can't blame a girl for trying. It's dead quiet here, and you can literally see forever. The clouds that envelop Abyssia, they form all kinds of interesting shapes. Looking at them never gets old. But to tell you the truth, I can't help but feel lonely. When I saw you come in calm wind, my heart skipped the beat. I thought I'd leap out of my chest for the joy. No exaggeration. I promise you'll come and visit me again, all right? It doesn't have to be every day, mind you. Every other day should do it. All right? Of course. That's a promise, calm wind. Don't even think of breaking it. Gonna give me a present, huh? It's the Abyssite of the Cosmos. Something that once belonged to the U of Abyssia. He would have wanted you to have it, Calm Wind. Take good care of it as if it were me, you hear? I don't remember what that does. Let's see, Abyssite of the Cosmos. Where's it at? A variety of ancient abyss that harbors arcane power. Certain items will find their way into the bearer's possession more readily. I'm gonna have to look up what that does. Let's see. Uh, the cost of primeval brew will be reduced from two million crew war to two hundred thousand crew war. Oh yeah. Except we don't even need brews, so Oh no. Okay. So I think we'll be in blunt time if we fight Shinryu right now. Um But honestly if we're gonna fight Shinryu again we should probably grab Thief Sub. We should grab Thief Sub and uh I should look up the blunt weapon skills again. 
So it's like WSNM weapon skills, the 225 skill weapon skill, and then it's like one of the earliest weapon skills for each thing, most of the time for blue. Let's see. Raging Fist, Spinning Attack, Howling Fist, Dragon Kick, and Asheran Fists for hand-to-hand. -hand. Skullbreaker, True Strike, Judgment, Hexa Strike, Black Halo for club. Heavy Swing, Shell Crusher, Full Swing, Spirit Taker, and Retribution. So we have all the staff ones, all but one of the club ones, and we'll be able to do... Well, with Thief Sub, we'll be able to do just, I think, just Spinning Attack for the hand-to-hand. So we, we got a pretty good chance at being able to do blue weakness against Shinryu, so we'll just go grab Thief Sub real quick and see what we can do. Let's see. If we had gone to get... get gotten to get in and slashing window the blues for slashing are vorpal blade swift blade savage blade spinning slash ground strike mistral axe decimation full break steel cyclone cross reaper spiral hell blade 10 blade coup tachigeko tachikasha hmm. so in all reality i mean blunt is probably the best blue blue window for us at all, because like the piercing window is dagger, polearm, archery, and marksmanship, and the only way you're getting the archery and marksmanship ones is if you're ranger. Uh, and ranger would have access to two of the dagger ones, but you wouldn't get any of the polearms. You'd be missing it on the best job to do the piercing weaknesses. You would be missing five of the the piercing weaknesses. And then, and slashing, the best we could hope for uh, is Warrior, because Warrior has access to four, five, seven, yeah, seven out of the uh, list, but it's still missing one, two, three, it's, it's still missing seven, and everything else is, is even less, wow. Yeah, so our best bet is actually Blunt Window. Let's go figure. Oh! My plant's ready to harvest? Let's see. Gardening. Harvest. Schwing! You have completed the records of eminence. You receive 10 deeds of heroism for a total of 70. Oh. Well, I don't have as many, nearly nearly as many deeds of heroism as I thought I did. But that's something we also want to start doing now, too. Actually, we should have been trying to do it before. I just didn't realize its importance. But here in Records of Eminence, there's daily objectives and there's monthly objectives. And the monthly objectives, they get you... Um, they, they're done once a month, and they're mostly pretty simple. Grow and harvest, experience change, and wanted, all very simple. Um, it's like an experience chain of five as well, so it's like not even that bad. Um, and a high tier mission battlefield, I think you don't even have to... Yeah, you just have to win one once. Uh, emerge victorious from the Celestial Nexus. Okay, so it's a specific high high tier battlefield, but yeah, like I don't think it has to be. I think you can do it on very easy, and and it, you get them. But each basically each month you can earn forty deeds of heroism, and once you've amassed, I think it's something like nine hundred and sixty. Um, you'll have achieved every reward from deeds of heroism that you can get. And some of the rewards are really stellar key items. Like, there's a key item for, I think it's like 480, or maybe it's maybe it's 720 deeds that lets you have five more merit points in 
weapon skills, and then later, there's a later one that lets you have five more after that, so we'll actually eventually someday be able to merit five of these weapon skills, so they're just three to maximum power, which is pretty cool. Um, but man, what was I doing? Oh yeah, we were going to go fight Shinryu again, because we can. Um, and since we know that it's going to be blunt weakness, we might as well just go ahead and uh, start off with the club. Yeah, it would actually be really nice to get Shinryu's Atma as well as um, the the necklace, the the Twilight Torque. The Twilight Torque is my main concern, but uh, I guess the robe would be kind of neat, if only just to show off the spell impact someday when we get a mage up to ninety. <laughs> Proceed. Yeah, and someday, well, we'll when we get up to 100,000 crew war, we'll be able to buy a third lunar abyssite. We're still not as strong as we could possibly be in Abyssia, but, eh. Precious Violet, please. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I guess... I guess just mount a champion. Enhancement effects, please. Spank your. Hey, we get this cutscene every time. Woo! Spring break! Check out! I just go with two white mage trust. I don't. I don't think it really matters. Hey there, buddy. All right, you can stun us if we attack him from behind. How about that? Marble to win the elemental weapon skills. So if it's not Cyclone, then we ain't got it. Cut you! Cut you! Tachi Jimbu, but we don't 
we might be having that. So let's go back to club and try to get blue. Tournament of SI, tell me things. Okay, his wings are closed, so. That's good. Although it also means that it's taken forever and a day to, uh. Vulnerable to hand to hand weapon skills. Very well. have exactly one of those, which is spinning attack. I don't know if that was clean. Tried a couple more times, but it's probably not spinning attack, so you know. Yeah, I think that one was clean, so I don't think I don't think it's spinning attack. We will just kill him now. Oh, I think his wings are no, they're not they're not spread again. Okay. Well This is the part where we say, Treasure Hunter, see me through. Yeah, got remedies. Might as well my strikes him. Do the whole shebang. Yeah, the kind of numbers we do thanks to item level are the kind of numbers you would do back in the day with Primeval Brew with like physical weapon skills. I mean, somewhat. I mean, Brew is actually a lot more impressive, but. Oh, I could slowly rant. Ah, well. Go figure. Wally, well, well. Um. I guess next on the docket is Seekers of Adelin storyline, so... I guess what I'll do between this time and next time is I'll level and I'll... Uh, I don't know. I guess try to farm Crew War and Abyssia while I wait on Void Stones for Void Watch. Although I'd kind of like to wait a few days, I guess, and let my Void Stones build up for Void Watch. Although I guess it might be possible to buy the, um, the Void Dust and trade it in for stones. I don't know. Let's see. Let me look that up. If that's doable. If it is doable, it might be expensive. Or it might just might be something people don't even do because um oh oh hey we can actually get it for imperial standing or conquest points huh well let's let's go see how much it goes for on the auction house if it if it, yeah, it's under the auction house under miscellaneous. So we could actually... Huh. We got multiple avenues we can attack this from. That means that if I can get void dust and just make my void stones happen sooner, uh, we could do all of void watch potentially, thanks to item level, and then just... 
um, you know, get that Twilight Torque from Shinryu regardless, and be groovy, happy campers. Does anyone actually sell Void Dust on the auction house? And if they do, is it reasonably priced? Void Dust. So 60k a stack, they sell it sometimes. 5k individually. Hmm. Well, it costs 2k conquest points or 2k imperial standing. And quite honestly, um,. What's my Imperial standing at? 300,000? Oh, ballin'. Uh, but yeah, quite honestly, making money off my Imperial standing has been kind of a uh, hit or miss thing ever since like somebody got into wild competition with me back when I was building my relics uh, over the price of the stacks of Imperial bronze and the individual price of Imperial gold pieces. And there was a... For some reason, people were selling stacks of Imperial Mithril pieces, I think it was. I think it was a stack of Imperial Mithril. For, like, two million. And I actually succeeded a couple of times in selling a stack of Imperial Mithril pieces for two million gil. Uh, due to people's sheer laziness. And not doing price comparisons. You know, basically just looking at the Puppet Master or the Corsair quest pages and being like, Oh, I need multiple Mithril pieces? I'll just buy a stack. How much is a stack? Well, damn, that's Highway Robbery, but psh, I don't fucking care. I buy Gil. And, <laughs> you know, just fucking doing it that way. But let's just see here. Let's just, as we wrap up on this episode, let's just see. You got that Void Dust? You got that, that, that Void Dust for me, buddy? Uh, page. Where's the Void Dust? Oh, Void Watch Purveyor and Al Zabi. Or White Gate. I ate. Uh, HI. So we need to go east, right? Yeah, okay. Right, so where's the Void Watch Purveyor? It like says he's like right Yeah, right there. Oh, he's dressed. Oh. Well, I feel dumb. The these cells, uh they're color coded and they raise those um alignment values for you. So if you really want to drop or something particular um Oh man, so one at a time. Oh jeez. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. Because it's one menu, and it's not even... I think they stacked to 12? I guess we'll find out. I'll get 12 of these bad boys. How many more do I need? Uh, I'm gonna th throw down this one forbidden key. I don't care at the moment. That's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, yes, we got twelve void dust. Now we go back to that do flotch it and see what he gives us. Bearstock. Bearstock Markets. X, please. Oh, snap! The siege is going on. Man, this is a really active time. It's almost time for me to walk my dogs, too. Wow. 
I've actually spent an afternoon gaming. It's amazing. Actually, this entire recording is my entire afternoon of gaming, by the way. That's how strict my schedule has, has gotten. I, I, I'm barely getting to play games these days. Can I trade you all 12 at once? Oh, okay, so he gave me three directly into my inventory. Okay, cool. So, like, yeah, we don't have to... We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about the timer or anything. We can just we can just do Void Watch and get a shit ton of crew war. <laughs> I can farm Shinryu off screen. And, um, although I actually would like to show like actually triggering weakness on him because um, I mean that's like one of the most satisfying things you can do in Abyssia is trigger weakness, <laughs> and I just haven't been able to do it. But yeah, now that. So, so we could just use our Imperial Standing. We could, we could go through the entirety of Void Watch. We'll just fucking kick its ass with trusts and and, and item level, and we'll be fine. So, yeah. But uh, I think this is a bit long on the tooth now. We're almost at two hours, which is the hard limit. So, uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a great day. And I'll see you again next time.